The woman who comes after me will be a bootleg version of who I am. This is Canadian poet Rupi Kaur, an international sensation and currently on a world tour. Eight million copies of her collections have been sold, including Milk and Honey. But you may have a hard time finding it in a school or library in Texas. It is on a list of books that have been challenged by community members and parents. There are poems about sexual abuse and violence experienced by young women. And Rupi Kaur is in Chicago, the latest stop on her world tour, and she takes some time out to speak with us. Hello, Rupi. It is a pleasure to connect with you today. Hi. It's so good to be here. Okay, so you are, as I'm sure you're aware, one of the world's most successful living poets. You've inspired what many call a new genre of poetry. But in some parts of the U.S., there are people who want your book banned. It's been a story that has been brewing for some time with a pending decision on whether or not there's going to be access uh, to your work in some libraries. How does all of this make you feel? It makes me feel really sad for young readers, because at the end of the day, the young readers are the ones who are suffering. Um, young readers who would have otherwise found comfort in or... Um, learn valuable information from not just my book, but there's hundreds of books at the moment that are um, lawmakers are trying to ban, uh, not only in Texas, but a lot of other states as well. Now, you did post about this on Instagram uh, when the efforts first began, particularly in Texas. And I do want to share part of what you said in that post. You said the banning of milk and honey, along with an ever-growing list of literature, is dangerously terrifying. Banning books is the banning of culture and experiences for everybody. So what about it is so terrifying? What's terrifying is that... This book is about something that almost 50% of us will probably go through, and that is sexual assault. And a book like Milk and Honey is about... it. I, I wrote that book for myself. Um, it was a book that I felt I needed as a teenager. And what makes me sad is that there are going to be 15-year-olds and 16-year-olds who can't afford to go to a bookstore and buy a copy who will not how ha not have access to this and I remember growing up I didn't have access to therapy and other mental health tools which is why reading books um, was what I really leaned on for support I want to talk a little bit about the evolution too that you may feel or may have witnessed not just in your career in your journey but in what is being considered as something that should not be available to young kids and, and what should be. And certainly you're saying that, you know, at one point you didn't really have access to mental health supports that would have been helpful. Certainly that has changed a lot, but there are conversations that have evolved in different ways. How do you think things are evolving right now culturally? Um, it's... It's like simultaneously, I feel like we've taken so many steps forwards, but then there's also all of these other things happening that it makes, it's like we're also, there's this push and pull of trying to take us back to a time where we felt, or at least myself as a young woman, felt less inspired. Um, I think, but the difference is, at least this is the energy that I feel, we are more empowered now to raise our voice than ever before. And um, that's kind of a relief. To that point of people feeling more empowered to raise their voice, there's been a lot written about how you've been credited with almost starting a new genre of poetry, of doing a self-published work, uh, using social media tools uh, to spread your work, uh, which has helped so many and is something that so many can relate to. What's your take on that new genre, on spurring that and inspiring new poets to sort of take their career path into their own hands? I think it's amazing. I think it's, I've just seen, I self-published my first book in 2014. And it was at a time when I remember going around asking for advice, like, I want to publish this book I wrote. Like, what do I do? And being told by professors, don't bother don't self-publish. Also, nobody's going to publish this book because 
there's absolutely no market for poetry. And they were kind of right. There wasn't. Um, if you went to bookstores, a poetry section would always be at the back and it would be very, very small. And most of the poets in that section were dead, not alive. Um, so you would rarely find contemporary people, uh, poets, and none of them were Punjabi or sick, which I identify as. And so it's such a relief now when I go to shows. So many of my readers are writers themselves. Um, just last night, I had an opening act in Chicago who actually self-published her own book. And it's so nice to see people of so many different backgrounds feel empowered to not only write, but then share their work. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier, too, about evolution, not only culturally, but the immigrant experience, which has really inspired uh, a lot of what you've written about. And I'm wondering how you think that has evolved, too, in how the immigrant experience is documented in places like Canada mm -hmm. and in the United States, and how comfortable people feel with documenting it. I would, I think people are definitely definitely feeling more and more comfortable documenting it. Um, people are being more vocal, which is amazing, but it's still, we don't have the, there still isn't enough. I think there is this, we have certain tropes of like the model minority or like the hardworking immigrant that comes, you know, crosses the sea with like, crosses the ocean with like a dollar in their pocket. But I think that there's so many immigrant stories um, from so many different communities, and I'm looking forward to for them to have more space. And very finally, I do want to ask you, I know you're on tour right now. What's next for Rupi Kaur? I am another book, uh, writing that. Hopefully, it will be coming out very, very soon. And I'm diving into, well, I've spent, there's been a lot of time, you know, been sitting at home over the last two and a half years. So I've been working on lots of new pro uh, projects that I hope to release in the coming year or two. Well, it has been a pleasure to connect with you today, Rupi. Thank you so much for Thank making you. time for us. Thank you. I appreciate it. That is Canadian poet Rupi Kaur, and she joined us today from Chicago. Thank you.